Hello, in this video I want to talk about mediation and ask the question whether it works with a, an emotional abuser. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Goddard from The Divorce Sanctuary, author of Finding Lily and the A to Z of Emotional Abuse. On this channel, I talk about healing from emotional abuse and divorcing both emotionally and physically from the emotional abuser. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're returning, welcome back and thank you. And thank you so much to all my new subscribers over the last few weeks. It's just been absolutely amazing. Thank you for your support. So in this video, I wanted to uh, look at understanding what a negotiation could look like, the tricks they use to stall the divorce process, how this affects you as their target over a period of time and finally I'll give you some maybe some tips in dealing with them to save your sanity. Mediation is a tool to help couples negotiate and come to a compromise. A third party is impartial, uh, they help get a the best resolution and if there are children involved then they make sure that they their needs are catered for as priority. The issue with mediation is that the emotional abuser tends to take over and play the victim and in my personal experience if the mediator isn't aware of this personality type then they can get overwhelmed and they can take the side of the abuser and completely forget the importance of the children and their needs. I know it works for emotionally healthy people and it is a brilliant tool, but we're not talking about healthy people and the more covert they are, the more they will manipulate because this behavior is so subtle. I've said in so many videos, that you were a project and that during the first stages, so that idealization stage, they listened to you. And if you had social media at the time, they probably stalked you to find out what was important and what you liked, what you disliked. When the relationship is over or as it's coming to an end, you might have noticed them changed. They were creating a new character for their next role. However, they still have your information on file. They know how to push buttons and they know what to say to get reaction and they know how to hurt you and they will use this information. I've also said in many videos that they can't take responsibility for anything. So they're not going to step in and take responsibility for this. Marriages break down for so many different reasons and emotionally healthy people go down the route of divorce but they will be able to accept and negotiate and they will give each other the closure needed to move on. People have affairs that doesn't make them emotionally abusive partners. These people will be remorseful and they will apologize and they will want to make sure that you're taking it, you are okay and they want, will take responsibility for their actions. Emotionally abusive people won't. They will blame you. They'll fail to negotiate on any level. They certainly have no intention of giving you any closure. And in their head, they've done the negotiation. It's already taken place. And they believe that you've agreed to it. So they really don't understand what there is to negotiate. So it can, in fact, be quite hard to mediate with them as mediation takes two partners who can reach a compromise. They will use every step of the process as a way of gaining supply and they can abuse you in front of everybody. Their solicitor is being paid by them and could actually take on the role of enabler. It's extremely frustrating and infuriating when the discussions about settlements quite easily turn into something that's worthy of a Jeremy Kyle show. And if you still have the trauma bond in place, then their behavior can send you into overwhelm. Emotionally divorcing from them first will make sure that you know what you want. Take time to do this. Understand exactly what you require from this divorce. A lot of people just pluck a figure from the air and never get the opportunity to sit down and really consider the next stages of their life. Don't accept a financial settlement that you're going to end up regretting. 
The manipulation lasts as long as the attention does. If they fail to get an emotional response from you, they start to get bored. They might have legal representation that actively encourages them. If you fail to engage, they will need to find the supply they were expecting elsewhere. Stand firm, make sure you understand what's really important to you and what you need to move forward and start a new life. As I said earlier, to them, this has already been agreed and it's just now a question of having everything approved. They have no intention of moving on anything. They will hide everything. What is yours is theirs and what is theirs is theirs. They will hide information and they will hide finances and they'll lie about everything and be aware of the carefully crafted email that contains important information as there are triggers in there to distract you and to send you into overwhelm. And they do everything to create self-doubt, fear, make you feel like you're losing your mind, make it difficult to make clear judgment and decisions. You end up second guessing everything and make you feel a sense of guilt and that you're not good enough. Believing in what the abuser is saying over what other people are saying. These types of relationships can take you to the point where you have a breakdown and here you are back in the arena with them, questioning everything. You might be going over the relationship again and again, questioning whether something happened, whether you said something, whether you behaved it in a certain way. And if you're not careful, you might miss important information that's hidden on purpose. And if you are forced down the route of mediation, you might need to keep reminding the mediators while you're there. My personal experience wasn't great. I found was that the emotional abuser secured their victim mask and they led with the wound. After several meetings, I gave up and I went back to my legal representation who'd asked me to go down that route. And during the meetings with the mediators, I kept having to remind them about the children. And at one particular meeting, they were discussing money. And despite me questioning the figures, they failed to address 10,000 pounds that had suddenly disappeared. And when I tried to draw them back, they just seemed to be so distracted by the emotional abuser's damaged child, they just dismissed it. If you're asked to do mediation, make sure you are prepared, make sure you are clear on what you want. Write everything down so you don't forget. Take notes as you would do in a meeting or ask the mediators to record the meeting. And if there is something important that you don't want to be overlooked or forgotten about, make sure that is highlighted. Record conversations if you need to. Don't try and label the abuser in front of the mediators. Don't try and get them to take responsibility. And if you need to re regroup your thoughts, then take a toilet break and go and stand in a cubicle and ground yourself and take a deep breath. You can change your chemistry by standing in the Superman pose, which is hands on hips and your feet slightly apart. You can do the same when you receive any communication from the emotional abuser. Put it to one side, ground yourself, breathe, and keep reminding yourself if there's anything in there that hurts, it was designed to injure you, to trigger you. Divorce emotionally first. You will then have no emotion and you will be responding, not reacting. And in the words of Vivian from Pretty Woman, when the maitre d' catches her escargot, they're slippery little suckers. Only you will know where the mediation is gonna work with your emotional abuser. That's a decision you will have to make. Think about all the considerations, the money and the time. If, it, if you don't believe that you're going to be able to negotiate or the people that are mediating are going to be able to negotiate. I hope you found this useful. I'll put the links to my workbook, Turn Broken Broken Into Your Superpower, in the description box below, as well as the links to both my books, Finding Lily and the A to Z of Emotional Abuse. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and sending you loads and loads and loads of love.